uh, almost some satellite versions of this which are relevant to each of the, the individual uh, regions. Um, the reason that we do it um, is just a, an update of where we're up to, um, an overview of where we're going. And uh, in the past, we've tried to cover kind of the full pathway, and we've tried to cover everything on one night, and it usually ends up being the same message. And we've gone a little bit away from that. We're going to speak a little bit about our vision. Uh, we're also then uh, going to concentrate on some of the key things that we think are really important that are happening at the moment. And it's also, when you see where, how the pathway is developed, it's also the reason that we think it's really important to put the Talent ID workshop on and there will be um, follow-on workshops with some, some people that uh, at the end will make sure people have got those details. So there is, um, there is the session with Joe Baker, who's a world leading expert uh, who's coming over from Canada uh, and we can share the details to everybody here if you're interested in that, that's in November. Um, there's also the county selection. Uh, 5th of December. 5th of December. Yeah which follows on from it and we are hoping that some of the discussion that gets raised today can direct the next part of this. There is a second part to this workshop that we'd like to see uh, a number of people at. But for me, um, ultimately the role of the academy and the 14 regional academies that there, there are across the country, um, we're licensed by the RFU. It's a, um, there, there are a number of things that we have to do and there's a, there's a uh, good amount of money we have to invest in it. And the outcomes of it are to produce players for the Premiership and produce players for England Rugby. Um, for us as a club outside of the Premiership, the investment from the club is significant as well because the production of players that end up playing out uh, at Headingley and playing for Yorkshire County is important. It's an important part of that player pathway. And, um, the ideal scenario is that York County are in the Premiership and these young lads come through and they, they develop and they play into their roles. Um, okay. uh, has everybody seen our vision on various documents or seen it at these events in the past? We, last, uh, last winter we dug a little bit further down into this um, as, a, as an academy and, and we share this with a number of our players, especially our EAP as well, about what that means. Uh, it's easy to have it, but if it doesn't mean anything to anybody, it doesn't re reflect on any of our actions, it doesn't really get anywhere. So we kind of broke it down into a number of, of different areas. So ultimately, um, take a responsibility for our learning, which means being self-aware about our strengths as an academy, and this, this links to our players as well as, as our staff. Um, where are our strengths? Where are the areas that we need to work on and focus on and, and improve and get better? We're responsible for that, we're responsible for having open conversation around what that looks like. It's part of the stakeholder forum process for us to be open that way. Uh, challenge each other to get better. So by looking at world leading experts to, to guide us, uh, whether that be in coaching, whether that be in strength and conditioning, sports science, anything like that, we, we should be looking at that to guide the direction of things we do alongside our own philosophies. <coughs> Um, we're, we're lucky in a way that we do have a very strong multidisciplinary platform. We have got uh, the resource linked in for our, with our partnership with Leeds Beckett and also through the RFU and the research that's happening around there as well as uh, a very strong medical team um, which means that we, we can be influenced by people who are, who are going to direct us towards life changing or game changing uh, things happening within the game and and often not when we work with young people, a lot of this is life changing and that's whether they kick on and they produce, they, they go on to, to play at the very highest level or whether they learn life skills that can then be integrated into what they do day to day. Um, and again, uh, if we are uh, breaking, breaking the ground on some, some research, if we are creating new resource, then it's our responsibility to share that and that's sharing it with the whole game, that's sharing it in Yorkshire first but it's also shared within the whole game. We have an opportunity that some places don't have. Um, the main thing that we speak about in our coaching groups, our coaching teams, is trying to make the session, each session, the best session of the week. Now for us, uh, different levels, that might be that the players may be in for one session a week. At DPP level, that's one session a month. At Senior Academy, that's three, four, possibly five sessions. Each one has got to be targeted to be the best session. That doesn't mean it is the most important session of that <coughs> for, 
for them individuals depending on where they're at. Because we have a number of players, as we all know, we're playing club rugby, we're playing school rugby, and different happen, things happen at different points of the season. And we're not blind enough to think that actually, in certain weeks, the best thing that they can do is train for their school and maybe observe our session, or train for club and not be involved in it. The, the structured season is built around this so that we can see some of these things in advance and we can work with players and parents to identify this. Uh, and then, Individual, maximising individual potential, and whether this, again this is this is ourselves putting our hands up and, and, and recognising our strengths and our, our work on, or whether that's this is these three things underpin everything throughout our the DPP, uh, all the junior development squads and junior academy around characteristics of players, and we've done this through tracking back from players who've been successful through the pathway and what qualities did they have. We've had some fantastic rugby players who haven't kicked on and there's a reason for that. We've also had some fantastic young men who've probably sat behind the pack as far as their rugby ability. But they've had something that's actually moved them ahead of others and they've progressed further down the pathway. Which, if it was purely rugby and it was tech-tack and that was it, or then that they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have uh, moved on to bigger and better things. So there's a huge area that we're trying to develop within our players that will support this and hopefully you'll see this within different environments of these, of these young men. Uh, we've just revamped and looked at our, 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 what the pathway looks like and we're trying to simplify what the pathway looks like but as you can see it is a very busy and this, this, as it stands now these figures, these playing population figures are up to date. Okay, so that's what the game looks like in Yorkshire from GMS, the latest inf the information that we have. So within that playing population, there is a dual uh, pathway that goes on. We try and keep the base as wide as we can throughout it all. Um, but as you see, it isn't, <coughs> it isn't a straightforward pathway. And the reason for the information around Talent ID is because between all of these elements, there, we want to have movement that is player-centred. So if a player, if it's right for a player to be in part of the pathway or not in part of the pathway or progress through the pathway, access different elements of the pathway, there has to be enough flexibility and enough knowledge around the players to allow that to happen and enough understanding that that can happen as well. And that doesn't mean that it changes every week. That means that we're having robust discussions with people over periods of time to allow players to kick on and get better and move on when it's right for them. Or in some cases move into another side of the pathway. Okay, so there's a number of different opportunities. What those relationships look like between parts of the pathway, hopefully we'll get a little bit more insight from, from uh, Kev when he talks around what talent looks like, what, what is a good talent pathway. Um, it's probably worth just being really clear that the main population is, is taken from GMS for registered players and, and at this moment schools don't have to register their players. So there will be guys who play rugby in schools that they're on top of that. But um, in terms of we're mandated to, to work with around 10% of the playing population, we can only take that figure from, from what we know, which is on, on GMS. So that's why those figures are there. We know there's probably a lot more players that have access to rugby in schools, either for half a term or what that looks like. Um, but if you put another figure on top, it makes an already very simple diagram. Maybe look a bit busy then. A little bit busy. A little bit busy. A little bit busy. Um, the key bit for us has been, which is which is different to some academies, is, is around the where the additional uh, selections may take place. Rather than there being across this, that just being 10%, we will make sure if a player progresses across to the, the Yorkshire County, the, the uh, academy side of the pathway, that there'll be players of backfield are allowed into this stream of the pathway. So it ends up that actually the yellow represents a 10% element so they're getting some, some monthly some additional coaching something to top themselves up with a view to them being able to access which element of the pathway is right for them so whether that is <coughs> through the academy whether it's further down the line through the county making sure that there are opportunities for players to to gain representation at the right level for them at the right time through the pathway and as i said it, it is all down to the relationships that work between the elements of the pathway and the information that we can gather and, and what we can do with when we have a, a player with a, a set talent. I won't go too much into that, I'll, I'll still. Okay. 
Ja som že laudinci o tom, že to je Just to touch on it, there have been a few minor changes in and around um, some elements of the pathway uh, in which uh, the main change is around Central and South Yorkshire. But this is all based on the playing population, so 10% get a genuine opportunity to, to, to access a pathway in their area. So you'll see Central previously would have sat just underneath Wakefield um, and South would have would have picked this area. That, that border has moved ever so slightly north. The plane population in south before was slightly less, and we do have a, a strong plane population in this area that means that players from there can access the, the pathway, the more people can access to the, the pathway in that area. The central one is so densely populated that it was very difficult to identify between players, because we're looking at potential of players, very difficult once you got outside of a certain number, you, you could have taken a lot more in that area, but in another area it might be very <coughs> difficult to progress some players. So it's a very it's very much a player centred approach that there has been a little tiny bit of movement around these. Again still five areas, fourteens to sixteens and, and the extended development of the academy will continue into seventeens. Uh, and that under, that underpins the academy underpins the count seventeens and for those who may sit outside of that, this year we played two games against Sweden under 18s. We hope to repl replicate that. For the players involved and the coaches involved, the feedback was immensely, immensely positive. Players who were, <coughs> to be very crude about it, would have been the third tier for what, what people would say. You've got academy, you've got county, and the next group of lads to still have something to aspire to long term still go and play a competitive and a close game of rugby which those games ended up being was great and it was great for the, the visiting team who came um, it sits outside the ERDPP it sits under our academy but we think it's important for the game of Yorkshire that there is an extended pathway that there is room for later developers and from that we have got a number of players who have then accessed the county <coughs> pathway have accessed the academy pathway who were never involved in any other part of the pathway prior to it. So we think it's a valuable addition to, to the pathway in Yorkshire. Um, and so far the, the feedback has been really positive around that. Uh, just some, some facts and figures for you around um, the numbers of clubs and schools that are involved in, in, with players in the pathway, uh, where, it currently is, where the, the figures currently sit. We've obviously we have got some um, uh, nomination period that is happening which will lift up some of these figures uh, come the December assessment um, and bring them up in line with the information we've got about the, the, uh, the growth of the game. Um, this will be in a handout so you can you can have a look at that, cross-reference it um, and there may be some, some slight changes from it as the, those regions develop and then move around a little bit. Uh, just going to focus on a, on a few things that, that we think are important elements within Yorkshire that we can we can share with people about where we're going. So uh, we mentioned about the different elements that contribute a huge amount to the, the, the how far a player might progress on a certain element of the pathway, um, and this this ultimately is is kind of the direction that we're taking it, and we're, we're seeing an impact already with it, both at DPP level and challenging the players in a different way and giving them a different kind of voice. So it's not necessarily just what they, they're doing on field; it's around their understanding and how they can transfer understanding to on field and, and learn. <coughs> um, but equally, in our 15s, 16s, and our under 18s at senior academy, we've adopted this and we're looking to challenge the players and. Part of our plans when we're planning sessions are to make sure that these kind of questions are constantly happening, whether that be that the session is themed around a question of one of these, so learning why we would do something, how do we do it, but why do we do it the way we think we should do it. We need to be challenging some of the things. There is often a number of answers to these questions, and we want the players to come up with it. We're not going with a predetermined viewpoint of what an answer to a question looks like. We also need to make sure that these three key areas uh, are planned within sessions as you would plan a skill within a session or whether you would plan another element of a session. So we need to periodise some of these elements within it. And then something that we are starting just to look at around, it's a, it, this is a football model, 
um, around developing some of the the picked up within here, but being quite um, picky when we design sessions to make sure that well, how how we grow in players' confidence. What what does commitment look like for a uh, an under fourteen <coughs> or a fifteen year old? Uh, communication is that that big one. It's an easy answer for players, but we do need them to have player to player relationships and player to coach relationships and be able to, to vocalise what they're thinking as well and quite often we find somebody who has got the knowledge can't actually share it with a group or can't challenge a coach. We want them to challenge us as coaches and we want them to understand what they're doing and share that within the group. Uh, what concentration looks like at that age when we're talking about rugby, how do we plan concentration in? Is it is it when we're on task, when we're off task? And then around control and, and what self-control means to, to young players and if, if we get elements of these going on uh, within a player's development, we get some of this growth of self-awareness that they're able to self-organise and take responsibility and put a growth mindset to, to want to improve and, and have some um, have some uh, acceptance of failure is, is part of the process we'll get much better answers to these questions and part of our approach has been uh, don't tell us, show us and then refer to it so show me the answer, don't just tell me the answer we, we see a lot of we do some, we, we'll do an activity and a lot of people have an answer and you, have, you say well when did you figure your answer out? Oh, two minutes in so, well, your actions haven't changed so how do your actions change to what you know, you've, you've told me you know something <coughs> but how, you, you need to go and show it because in a game on a Saturday, Sunday, you need to show your actions. Fine, coming off and telling everybody what you did well, what you didn't do so well. But if your actions don't match it, then that is going to hold the player back long term. So, understanding, great, transferring it to actions is, is where we are. <coughs> if we get some of these things right, we will have uh, a talent pool of players that are able to do a lot more than current they are able to do, and we'll have more players pushing further up the and, and be able to reflect on these skills themselves. Uh, this is what it looks like within our planning um, and with some of the distance learning with the one to one satellite sessions, how we then grow it into the under 15s, under 16s, 18s, and certainly post 18s. This will be, this will be a, a bit of everybody's relief so we can have a read through that. Um, something else we've added to this is, is around our, um, the, the player development system and, and the principles of excellence as well which we'll probably pick up on some of that in a, in a future CPD. Some of the guys who were in here attended it, led by Mark Bennett when he last came up. We've, we've delivered some almost watered down versions of it through the DPP program. Um, we will be asking Mark to come back up and, and deliver again on that, but it's, it has changed a number of elements of delivery for the better and, and has, has opened. It's improved us as coaches and it's opened players up to a different mm. style as well when required for them to do so. Um, pretty much underpinning all of the pathway, underpinning the, the monthly sessions, the weekly sessions, the, 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 the growth of sessions at key points of the year, uh, underpinning the CPD we're undertaking and the learning we're doing, uh, the psychosocial development of players. We recognise that, again, going back to our vision, that if we keep all that in house, we won't actually see a benefit, we won't actually see a growth of the game in Yorkshire, and that's that's what we all truly want. We want players to come through our pathway, fantastic, great, but we want to grow the game in Yorkshire, we want to imp ideally improve what goes on out there, see more people stay in the game for longer, um, and more people really you know, underpin the game in Yorkshire to a, to a higher standard. We can't do it without a, a robust education development programme, and so... Um, <coughs> A lot of these things, or quite a number of these things, were, were happening, but they have been laid on top. There's a lot. There are now more elements of these things happening. So Stuart's taken a, a lead on this as part of his role, um, and, and layering these different things um, within the county. So um, all of this stuff. If you follow Stuart on Twitter, or if you um, on Instagram, where else do you show these things? Everywhere. Well, Look at his tattoos. <laughs> tattoos on him somewhere. Like um, prison break. Yeah. <laughs> um, so follow because there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things that are regionalised as well. So there should be not too much. There should be plenty of things and, and not too far to travel for as well. So 
I think that's important. We can't do everything in every region every time, but we can spread it out and we can rotate around year on year and there will be some, again, some, some uh, centralised uh, core CPD opportunities as well that, that we'll look at. Just, just to add to this as well, all of the sessions that we deliver are all open door policy. We prefer it if we know somebody's coming, but if you want to come to another 16 session, you're welcome to come. If you want to come to a 15 session, come to it. If you want to come to a DPP session or see someone else's DPP session, do it. If you want to come to an under 18 session, you're welcome. So it is an open door policy. We stress that not many people access that. And we're not saying that, yeah, we're the beacon and we're the best and everything else, and you need to come and look at us and we'll tell you what to do, because that's not the case. The last people who have come to our sessions, we've learned things from. We want you to come so we can learn more from it. We've got, at the moment, within our boot rooms, we've got coaches coming in and giving us their philosophies that we're learning from. So come to sessions. If there's one thing you take away from it, good or bad, then it's worth a visit. If we get one thing from it, fantastic. But definitely, they're all they're all open door. As I said, we prefer to know if you are coming. We can make sure we can look after you. Um, but yeah, any sessions are, are available to come from. Just kind of on that, it's probably a unique advantage that we have. We've got one academy in, in one county. Uh, all the other academies have, have got a minimum of two counties that they work with. So I work with Franny, I work with Pete and the local RDO team to make sure that we don't overkill in one area. So a great example would be the scrum dancing next Wednesday at Barnsley. Uh, you're all welcome to come, by the way. Um, it's happening, but there's something happening in North Yorkshire. So quite obviously we wouldn't want to put something on in North Yorkshire the same night if we want to support each other and all the coaches get the best access so you kind of may look at it and it looks a bit busy and I get that but it's, this is a combination of three entities working together to support coaches and, and therefore the players throughout Yorkshire so it's a, very much a three pronged attack for myself, the county and, and the RFU guys. Isn't that right Evan? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. doing the mm -hmm. cards? That, Ripping next week, are you? Weatherby. Weatherby, Wednesday there we go, night. you see. So he's at Weatherby, we're at Barnsley. Come and find one of us, we'll have a great night. <laughs> we'll see. Um, again, this will be the handout where we're trying to really push our elite player support uh, on the top end of playing opportunities. So this year we've had senior academy players, a number of them are playing in the first team. We've got lots of them who have played at Newcastle A League, uh, Wasps A League, Bath A League developing relationships there because for some of them boys that's exactly the right level of playing they want to be. Um, we've got uh, players playing out at uh, National 2, uh, National 1 clubs as well. Um, we've got the option there for the lads playing in the Leeds Beckett Super Rugby programme. Um, all within package so we, we make it very individual um, to what the needs of the player are and then we develop our network around that. Then underneath it, the actual support and the people that we have involved in them to make sure that we don't we don't leave any stones unturned. And at certain times, players need to be left to get on with it. And some certain times, they need everybody to get around them. And we've very much got a player player focusing. I've used two sides of foxes, though. He'll be going to his head. Okay. Uh, and as we say to our players and our coaches, how do we want to leave our mark? Well, these lads who are playing age grade uh, rugby uh, for England or above. And moving on, um, we're responsible for that as much as the players are as well. Yeah, and that's whatever level we're coaching, wherever we're coaching, we can have an influence on that. 